Good evening and welcome to the Whaler Guys. I'm Jerry Irwin along with Pete Hindle, my partner in crime, mm -hmm. here in the hockey bunker at 20-28 Sergeant Street, Hartford Public Access. World Headquarters. World Headquarters. We are the Whaler Guys. You guys are the brigade and we are one nation under green. We have the summertime attire, so someone isn't too hot That's today. That's right. I, you know. But you're still hot. I'm ready for the ice now. Let's keep going. <laughs> That's right. Get rid of this July and August stuff. It's getting October. <laughs> So we have, a, a, what, about a week left before uh, Whaler Weekend at the uh, Hartford Yard Goats. And uh, we were lucky enough last weekend to have Dean uh, Zeppelardi on our show. Yep. He was a great guest. He was uh, a lot of fun to have on the show. Uh, again, this past weekend, 4th of July weekend, uh, they sold out another couple games. Yeah, and as Dean said, they've already hit their ticket goal for the year. So, I mean, you know, they just got past a little halfway through this, uh, you know, and already they're hitting the ticket goal. And I know everyone's saying, well, it's brand new, but it's a different ballpark. We talked about how nice the ballpark is. You can see what a difference it makes when you market to the market. Uh, you know, you use the Whaler colors, you got the Whaler logos. People show up in their Whaler shirt and they got the yard goats. It's a match. Uh, you know, it's a good example of showing the viability of this market. One and two, when you market correctly, you get uh, pretty good attendance. I mean, and, they're hitting they, their they their done, mark early. They 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 did. It was just on social media either uh, yesterday or day before. They've they've had forty thousand fans since they've opened. Yeah. Forty thousand fans, and they were voted yeah. the most attractive and great looking ballpark in Double A yeah. baseball. Yeah. So, now that's a that's a big step. You yeah. know, after all the negativity. These are all the positives after yeah. all the hard work to get this done. Yeah. And whether people complain yeah. or, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Mayor Bronin did a nice job to get this thing through the final stages, right, right. get it open, and now it's making money. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bummer about the surrounding area because the surrounding area was tied into more development. You heard about the Hard Rock Hotel and maybe possibly a, a brewery or even a grocery store. So that stuff is going to be held up probably and go through the motions and, you know, they're going to have to work that all out and... In court, but the, the good news is, you know, hey, we got lemons, and th they're making one hell of a fine lemonade out of this whole thing. Uh, you know, everyone's talking about it. Everyone's going to the games. If you haven't been there yet, definitely go to this ballpark and check it out. I mean, it shows that you do something nice in Hartford. I mean, it was just a parking lot was there. It was mm -hmm. nothing, but it looked like, you know, it was a former, uh, you know, nuclear strike. I mean, it's just <laughs> this level parking lot with just gravel everywhere. And now you got this ballpark that brings in people from, you know, all over the greater Hartford area. And, uh, you know, hey, it shows some market viability. It shows the correct way to market the market. And uh, we're off into the races. Now, in the next couple of years, maybe, you know, tenants won't be as hot because it won't be the, you know, the brand new hot thing. But it's the type of ballpark where, I mean, I could go at any time I'm interested in going. You know, it's, yeah, it's and, easy to get to. And as we you saw, know. you know, we have a lot of families, yeah. a lot of youth baseball teams right. coming in with their coaches. And, and that's what it's about. It's attracting that family right. entertainment. And, you know, the prices are inexpensive to buy tickets Very, and the yeah. food was not expensive at all no i mean and, it's, it's 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 you know it's and, it's the type of food that we is. go out it's you know a little yeah. bit more expensive but not uh, you know outrageous at all and you know what the, the variety like i said you have these neighborhoods in this ballpark where you can go over to the barbecue section you go over to the top terrace uh the budweiser uh, area they mm -hmm. got there you know the beer garden mm -hmm. uh i mean it's just there's a lot to do as a matter of fact I really haven't had time to sit down and watch this team yeah. uh, to see, you know, who the who the up and comers are and who's uh, hanging around. Because mm. next thing you know, you're talking to other people and Whaler fans, and they got that thing where everybody signed it. Mm -hmm. And if you if you do go check out all the signs on the on the opening night, they had this big banner and everyone signed their name. Mm -hmm. Look for the Whaler symbol. It's out there. There's yeah. a, there's a Whaler symbol in that giant banner. <laughs> that's always going to be there forever. And it's a great partnership. Uh, they is. did the right thing, hooking onto this. Whaler thing and uh, people, you know, we've got the we license were, plates. We were there's, there. There's enough we, going on with Whalers. Yeah, and we uh, and we were there. Still we were there. They scored the first run. They played the Brass Bonanza. Yeah. So you know, again, they're doing they're, it right. They're doing yep. the right things, and you know, it, it all goes into the history of Hartford. And like you saw in the gift shop, they had the, the Hartford Chiefs. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, making shirt. it all about Hartford, and that's great because you know we just we, we don't have any uh, team that celebrates Hartford. I mean, the Chiefs were. A team that was a baseball team was here in 1952. I mean, that's mm -hmm. how long yeah. it's been here. But they were able to print the logo, get the T-shirts. They have uh, Yukon there. They have mm -hmm. Whaler shirts there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a nice gift shop. I'm gonna just, and they've, of course they got the hats coming uh, for this the Whaler weekend mm -hmm. with the goat chomping on the hockey stick, which mm -hmm. is a nice little piece of uh, memorabilia. So you can remember Whaler weekend with the uh, the nice yard goat hat. Mm -hmm. I gotta pick up one of those. So yeah, it's yeah. it's a it's a great deal. And we have to give a shout out to our social media geniuses, yeah. uh, Matthew Barry and Gabe Rosa, who did just an outstanding job uh, helping the Yard Goats. Uh, we we uh, wanted to put out 
uh, kind of a lineup and highlight the players that are going to be uh, in attendance for Whaler Weekend. And there's about 16 last week, and I think we're up to 20 or 24 yeah, now. Yeah, and remember to buy your tickets uh, uh, for the Yard Goats uh, luncheon with the Whalers. That's right. It'll cost you $100, but yeah. it's money well spent, and you'll have a Hartford or a Whaler at your table. Oops. I don't know if yeah. it's a New England Whaler or a Hartford Whaler, yeah. uh, but you'll, ha you'll be able to have lunch with a Whaler player. And that money goes to the Boys and Girls Club of Hartford. So, right. uh, again, another great charity that's going to benefit. And on Friday, yeah. Uh, the Police Athletic League is having a golf tournament over at Keeney Park, yep. and that's going to directly um, uh, help uh, contribute to the Police Athletic League, uh, Hartford Police Department um, yeah. section of that. And that, you know, that uh, is a great new golf course because they redid the whole thing. They did. And it's a beautiful golf course. They have a great restaurant there that we have to actually go and uh, yeah. introduce ourselves and have a beverage on a hot day. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's great. You bring back these whalers and then you mm -hmm. get these, these charity events and then people can go to them and, uh, you know, they're, they're, there's plenty of whalers going to be there. I mean, mm -hmm. you maybe don't have the super headliner like a Kevin Deneen or a Ron Francis, but uh, you know, the, the lineup that they have is pretty good. There's a lot of players there that uh, love playing in Hartford. They're all coming back. I mean, mm -hmm. some of them are kind of local. Uh, Marty Howe is, sp yep, is yep, supposed to be yep. there. So, uh, you know, he, part of that Howe legacy. Yep. Uh, so, you know, it's it's going to be an interesting thing. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to be there, no. unfortunately. So you're going to miss it. But, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to be there. The, you know, we're going to try to, uh, you know, be there well, we and be a part of it. Well, we know that between you, yep. you, Matthew Barry, we'll yep. have plenty of pictures on our social media <laughs> so everyone can see. If you can't make it for some reason, like myself, I'm yeah. going to be on vacation. Um, uh, we'll be able to follow on social media as right. we're in other places. Right. Uh, but Matt and Gabe, they did a great job. Yep. They created these player cards with uh, the Whaler player. And in the lower left-hand corner is the yard goat chomping on the hockey stick. Yeah. And it's, it's highlighting who's going to be there. So if you haven't been to our uh, Facebook page, take a look, and you can see what a great job Matthew and Gabe did. Uh, that's right. Kind of highlighting who's going to be at yeah, this uh, weekend. Yeah, the, uh, the other whaler guys. That's what those guys are. And that's yep. right. Yep, they're the behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's um, more than uh, two whaler guys. That's yep. right. Yeah. And... Um, you know, as we, you know, as as we're in the hot season now, so we're not really into hockey season. You know, there's so many things going on. They just announced the inductees for the 2017 uh, Hockey Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, some great names in there. You have uh, Tamo Solani, Paul Correa, wow. Dave Andrichuk, yeah. who drove me absolutely oh, BS he was, you know, when he played for the Sabers. Yeah. Uh, but they were a team, a, a good team in in the 80s when they played the oh, Whalers yeah. Uh, yeah. in the in the at, the real. Tough Adams division. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, he was. Oh, uh, yeah. He was. A, he was yeah. definitely a good player. He was a beast. He was huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and we have to also uh, Danielle Goyette, uh, who uh, played for the Canadian uh, women's ice hockey team yeah. uh, over the years. Uh, she'll be going into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Jeremy Jacobs, the owner of the Boston Bruins, wow. and Claire Drake, who is uh, the head coach of the University of Alberta, uh, and uh, you know. You know, when you look at the class going in, uh, Solani had a great career. Uh, Korea, uh, he played for the Ducks. Yeah. Actually, uh, Solani too, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, then he went on to, um, who did he go on after that? Or, no, he was with the Ducks the yeah, whole time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Korea, uh, he played a couple of different teams, but those two guys yeah. were part of that, uh, you know, the European invasion kind yeah. of thing. And, uh, you know, they... I mean, they were fast. They were agile. They were mm -hmm. seemed to always be on those West Coast teams. Yep. So they had the you know the or open area of skating. But uh, yeah, without question, those guys. I mean, most of these, everybody pretty much on this list is is almost a guaranteed fly. Yeah. And uh, you know, Dave Anderchuk, you know, played on Buffalo, played on some teams that weren't as good as uh, you know as some of the uh, powerhouses. But man, he was a player. I mean, he, he was, was a full a, a full force. We reckon he just picked up a coaching job too. Oh, did he? I think so. So. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys going to be around. Of course, Mark Recchi was a dangerous scorer he was in with, the 80s. He oh. was with uh, yeah. Carolina. Yeah. Uh, Pittsburgh. I think Flyers. Yeah, Pittsburgh uh, Flyers. Uh, and, uh, and then he finished up in Arizona, I think. It was uh, with, with Br Gretzky. Bruins, the Bruins for a little uh, while. Oh, I think yeah. he did one season yeah. with them. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. he. So one did blemish. he finish with them? Yeah, no. Oh, well, nice, no, too. <laughs> Carolina and Boston. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely a dangerous offensive yep. player in, uh, in the 80s. and and 90s there. And yeah. Jeremy Jacobs, I can't even remember how long he's owned the Bruins. How long has it been? Do you know? No, I don't. Has it been Honestly, over 20 years? It was one of those yeah. things where, you know, uh, you know, I, I like the guy because he wants to bring the Whalers back. Yeah. You know, he was, you know, this is someone outside of the Hartford area yeah. who wants to bring the Whalers he's back. He's got no problem with it. Yeah. Uh, we, we uh, talking about outside the Hartford area, uh, you know, uh, with the license plates and, and some of the publicity that it, it has gotten. Uh, Bob Lee from ESPN 
uh, tweeted out that, you know, hey, 20 years later, we have a license plate. Is it too late? Well, you know, I tweeted back at him and, you know, did a positive spin on it that, yeah. you know, we all worked very hard to get these license plates done. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, who was the other guy? Ravel? Yeah. Uh, Darren, Darren, uh, Darren Ravel from yeah. ESPN also uh, picked yeah. up on, uh, yeah. on the article. Yeah, so. they, don't, they missed the kind of sight. You know, they're pointing out, like, oh, it's 20 years, you know, after they left. How come now? Yeah. Well, I think it shows. Wow, it's amazing. 20, you, you go to another city that's lost a franchise 20 years ago and, you know, go, go to Baltimore, get a Baltimore Colts plate, see how right. well that goes. Yeah. Uh, you know, go to these other cities and try to do that. And you probably couldn't. So, you know, Hartford, the Whaler Nation can hang its hat on that because yep. 20 years later, we got this plate through uh, and, and it's, it was a and, done deal. And so. now it's a public act for a year yeah. and that'll be a, a real law. Right. It's, it's currently a public act. That'll it'll be a... a a, a law after a year. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, you know, that that we had to help educate people on was that it's sixty dollars for a plate. Forty five dollars of that is going to the Connecticut Children's Medical Center. Right. And again, it, how could you not give to the Connecticut Children's Medical Center? It yeah. is a, a nationally uh, recognized uh, hospital. Right. Uh, and they do a great job. We've, yeah. we've been in conversation with them. Yeah. Uh, and we'll be doing some public relations stuff so yeah, with them as, the, as the months go on. Yeah. So they're a nice bunch of people. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing about Whalers fans, uh, we all heard that Ol Samuelson was just signed yeah. uh, to join jo Joel Quenville and wow. Kevin Deneen behind the bench. What a, what, a, what a boost for Chicago. They get the entire Hartford market. They got those three guys <laughs> yeah. coaching there. So, you know, uh, definitely, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always been funny to me because, you know, it's kind of, you know, maybe it's common knowledge, but the two best jerseys in the NHL are the Whalers and people love the Blackhawk jersey. Oh, yeah. They love oh, yeah. the Blackhawk jersey. So yep. one and two. So, uh, you know, th there's no problem for Whaler fans. You mm -hmm. know, if they were coaching the Bruins, that would be an interesting thing. Or they're coaching yeah. the Rangers. That would be kind of, you know, Ulf yeah. was there, and, uh, you know, for a little bit. But, uh, you know, it's easy for Whaler fans to drift over to Chicago. So we'll have mm -hmm. to see what they do now. They've, they've had some uh, changes in the coaching. They, you know, some players have left. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they had that first down, uh, first round uh, outer by... Uh, Nashville, you know, swept them. So, but but uh, you can't feel bad because no. you know they they were out four games to none. Yeah, and then Nashville goes in the next series and wins the first two right away. Yeah, it's yeah. like wow, well, Nashville, Nashville was they, good. they were on yeah. a tear. Yeah, and you know from Nashville, uh, Neil got uh, picked up in the expansion draft by uh, by the Golden Knights of yeah. Las Vegas. Oh. The other one that got dra uh, that got picked up was uh, Flurry from uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. That was a big grab for uh, the yeah. Golden Knights, and was, they made a big yeah. splash. Now George McPhee, who's the general manager for uh, Las Vegas, was George McPhee from yeah. the Montreal Canadiens. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, and that you That's know right, McPhee. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, looking at you know where they're um, they're going, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see. Las Vegas come into the mix this year. Yeah, uh, I think I'm obviously when you get to this point in your season or the summer, I'm ready for hockey to start. Yeah, and you know you can see that they're having some some skating sessions with the younger, the prospects, and that type of thing. Yeah. So we're starting to get that build up, kind of like spring training. You yeah. know, okay, they reported the camp and they're doing their thing. So you know, I, I I'm excited about it. You know, yeah. some of the things that. Uh, we, we've been paying attention to is, um, is some of the trades that have happened. And, yeah, a and lot Nashville, of movement. Yep. And Nashville traded uh, Colin Wilson to Colorado for yeah. a fourth round draft pick. Yep. And, you know, Colin Wilson had a decent uh, time in the playoffs. Yeah. And yeah. as you brought up, uh, he's yeah. the son of Kerry Wilson, who played for the Whalers yeah. and the Rangers and yeah. Calgary. Yeah, and two different uh, times. They, you know, they got Kerry Wilson twice and they traded him away, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. He was a very good uh, two way player, very yeah, he nice was. center. Yeah. Yep. So you've got uh, Martin uh, Hansel here agrees to a Dallas uh, with the Stars agrees to a three-year deal. So a lot of money being thrown around. I mean, this is a uh, you know 4.75 million deal for over the three years, and uh, you know Dallas is uh, one of those teams that has to come back to the fold a little bit. They a couple of years ago where they were pretty deadly, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, you know this year it was uh, not the, not their. I, I year picked year. up something yeah. on social media today, but I didn't have a chance to read it. I, I, where they're sitting with Sagan. Um, to mm. see where he's going to end up, yeah. uh, and I didn't read the whole article, so I can't I can't comment on it. But you know, looking at what Ken Hitchcock has to do with that club, and yeah. he's just a great coach. Yeah, um, yeah, very good coach. And you yeah. know, then then you have uh, uh, Trevor Daly, who played with uh, Pittsburgh and, and won the cup, yeah. is now uh, heading over to Detroit. <laughs> it was a three-year deal for him. Uh, so you know, I think Detroit's trying to get some depth on their team. Yeah, they yeah. they you know, and, and missing some the playoffs, vet veteran yeah. leadership. Yeah, and you know everyone's grabbing uh, anybody who's a free agent out of Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, you know Vegas grabs uh, Fleury. You know, yep. Uh, you got the you know Trevor Daly here, and then uh, of course this big, this big one next yeah, one. Yeah, Nick Bonino. Uh, yep. Well, Nick Bonino yep. was leaving. 
uh, Pittsburgh after winning two cups. Yep. And now he'll be going to Nashville. So yep. uh, that's actually not a bad move for him because there's no, no way you can't say that he's got a shot to win a cup with Nashville. Yeah. Uh, you know, last uh, two years ago they made it to you know to play up against San Jose and that. Uh, Conference final they lost. This year they make it to the cup final and lose in six games. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe next year's their year, Peter LaViolette. And uh, Nashville's going to be back. Great coach. And, and what an exciting uh, city it sounds like. Uh, yeah. For a hockey city. Oh, I, yeah. I'm uh, very impressed. Yeah, I was too. Yeah, and it yeah. was a lot of fun to see how excited those fans were. Yeah, it made me believe in Nashville. Uh, you know, cowboy hats and, and hockey pucks. That's right. It sounds like a little bit like, you know, banana and peanut <laughs> butter, but it, you know, it works. So, yeah. so. Uh, and they really did show up. And, they, and, you know, if you've ever been to Nashville, there's this Broadway section where all the, you know, Tootsies and all the famous bars mm -hmm. are. And it's right next to the Ryman Auditorium. And that place was just jam-packed, street mm -hmm. closed, everyone partying, watching the big screen. Oh, yeah. Uh, watching, I mean, that, I, I wanted to go there. So, yeah. uh, you know, it definitely was a place to go. So uh, Nashville now, is doing well. Now, the next yep. one is a huge deal. Yeah, it kind of uh, was expected, but still, yeah. You know, for the Rangers to get Kevin Shattenkirk. yeah. And they're signing him for four years, six point nine million dollars. Yeah. Uh, that's a big deal. Yeah, it is. And especially with their defense uh, in front of uh, uh, Lundqvist, yeah. uh, I, I think that's going to be great for the Rangers. Uh, and especially, what if they they team him up with um, who is it, McDonough? Yeah. On, uh, or or uh, Girardi? Yeah, yeah. You know? They finally have that that power play quarterback that yep. they've always wanted. Yep. He's always wanted to play in New York. Uh, you know, so this and he's is kind quite, of a, he's quite an offensive defenseman. Yes, yeah, yeah this is yeah. this is what the the Rangers have always been looking for. They got him now for four years, mm -hmm. and I think he even you know took a little bit of a pay cut to go home. I mean, seven million, it's not bad for getting him for four years now. Yeah, uh, he did not make it happen for the Capitals. Like you know, I can't mm. say he played horribly, mm. but he did not have the impact that they were looking no. for, and it was a one-shot deal. You knew they weren't going to re-sign him. Well, no, they couldn't uh, they because couldn't, they couldn't afford as, it. As, yeah. as later on, later on uh, yeah. T.J. Oshie, <laughs> yeah. you know, eight years, forty-six million. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, uh, look at look at uh, Shattenkirk's four years yeah. at six point nine million per year. Yeah. Uh, that's a good deal. And, yeah. and we just saw, uh, just announced earlier today that, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, yeah. Uh, the guy for uh, the Oilers, McDavid. Oh, yeah, signed Connor an McDavid. Signed eight-year, yeah. $100 million contract. Yeah, with a lot of sign-on bonuses, and which makes you a little nervous. because 86 million of the $100 million yeah. is signing bonus. 86, wow. So he's guaranteed that $86 so million. That's how are you going to motivate him to play later on yeah. down the road when he's only playing for you know, well, you know a million I, a season? Or you know, for, the, season. for the games I was yeah. able to see in the playoffs, I, I was excited to watch Connor McDavid play. Yeah. Uh, he, is a, he is a spark plug. And... and it's kind of contagious on that team. They yeah. all wanted to play and, and make it happen. Yeah. Uh, so it was a lot of fun and watching you'll him. see because he's, what, 18 or 19. So, yeah. uh, you know, he'll be 28 or 27 when he's he. He's the youngest uh, captain ever. Yeah, and yep. not only that, but, you know, 27, 28. He's still got another go around, probably get another seven year deal somewhere. Yeah. If not in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. uh, by then, he'd probably be the, one of their top scorers. So, yeah. uh, very impressive player. And it, it's good that these players stay in those smaller markets too because if this just got picked up and he got moved to new york or pittsburgh or mm -hmm. and it would just be you know another fleecing of the small market right. so it's good to lock up a guy like this now maybe some people actually want to play with him and go to edmonton mm -hmm. uh you know i was not a fan of edmonton when i was a kid because they were so good I, in the 80s but now you kind of pull for him because of the wha team i always enjoyed you know? watching them yeah uh you know they, Great market. They, they really yeah back in the day when they had yari curry they had uh yeah. kevin lowe yeah uh wayne that gretzky was a team yeah and uh, we do have to pass on our condolences to semenko uh, yeah. family uh dave semenko uh lost his battle with a very brief battle with cancer yeah. And, uh, you know, good old Cement Head, he was on the ice yeah. for the Whalers. Uh, towards the end of his career, he's always going to be known as uh, Wayne Gretzky's bodyguard out yeah, there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and one of the last, I think he was the last player on the Whalers to yeah. not wear a helmet. That might be true, because uh, other than him, it was just, you know, like Craig McTavish, and that was it mm -hmm. pretty much. So uh, I would say that that's probably true. I mean, I can't think, because you think of that, that no, he was the 86, 87 season. Yeah. Uh, that's about seven or eight years after they made the helmet loss. The so, only, the only yeah. other person that I can remember yeah. personally not wearing a helmet was Ron Duguay from the uh, the Rangers. Oh, you remember yeah, with the yeah. long hair? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boy, that's, yeah. A, that's an era long and I think, gone. And yeah. I think he uh, did the Vidal Sassoon commercials <laughs> uh, out of New yeah, York. Yeah. You, you'd see it on... Uh, that was at WOR9. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And you see him in his Ranger jersey yeah. with his long, yeah. gelled hair. His flowing yeah. locks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too funny. That reminds me, yeah. Yeah, Guy Lafleur had the same kind of And we, deal, we bring yeah. up the next guy yeah. is uh, a former Wolfpack goalie, uh, Chad Johnson. He's going to be staying with the Buffalo Sabres this year. So, you That's know, great it, it's great to yeah. see Chad Johnson. 
And then um, and the other goalie uh, over uh, with um, uh, Cam Talbot. Yeah, yeah, Cam Talbot with yeah. Uh, the Oilers. Yeah, and um, both those guys were the Connecticut Whale. They, you know, 2010, 2011 yeah. season. And uh, you know, you never. I never thought that Chad Johnson was going to have this much of a career in the NHL. Yeah, I mean, he's bounced around a little oh, bit he, to Buffalo, yeah. Boston, yep. Calgary. This and that. But you know what? He's he's got a job in the NHL. Yep. And there's only you know how many people. And are, Cam Talbot had yeah. a off the hook year last he, he year. Did. He Again, did again the yeah. Oilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, how about that? Some good goalies coming out of the Wolfpack, uh, making careers. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they actually lost Helberg this year. He went to go play in the KHL. I think. Okay. So they, you know, and then as you can see, uh, they also when the the Rangers traded Stepan and, and Antti uh, Ratna yeah. Renta yep. uh, to the Arizona Coyotes in exchange for the number seven overall pick, which is Anthony D'Angelo. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of a big trade. Stepan's been a big part of the Rangers' you know, focal point. Uh, but obviously they want to well, get younger. Well, they the want to get a little bit more scoring power. They have to make power. that cap yeah. available for Shattenkirk. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They did because that's a big – yeah, right, yeah. $7 million a yeah. year. Uh, they had to clear some room, but you know this this is going to be it for the Rangers because yeah. uh, you know Lundqvist is now going to be 35, 36 somewhere in and around right. there. I mean, you're only looking at a season two left. I mean, once he hits 39, 40, I mean, how good can he be? But of course, right. um, the New Jersey goalie who I can't remember his name now is great, one of the greatest goalies of all time. Oh, uh, Brodeur. Yeah, Brodeur, Brodeur yeah. was uh, you know he was playing at the top of his level mm -hmm. pretty late in his career. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of it for the, the last couple of years for the Rangers to make that run. And, and staying with the Rangers and Wolfpack notes, uh, you know, yeah. the, they made that, the Wolfpack made a change in leadership uh, with, uh, with Ken Jernander. Yeah. Uh, he's off. Uh, he, uh, he was fired uh, yeah. from the Wolfpack. Great guy, complete gentleman, yeah. great guy to be around, yeah. uh, good family man, uh, very nice family. And we wish him and his family the best of luck in yeah. their future endeavors. And yep. taking over for him is uh, is uh, Keith McCain McCain McCambridge, yep. head coach uh, this year. Um, he is the sixth head coach of the Wolfpack, and he has uh, some pr previous history with the AHL, the Winnipeg Jets Farm Club. Yeah. Um, he was served five seasons with them. Yeah. And then. Uh, he was with the St. John Ice Cats yep. and the Manitoba Moose. Uh, yeah. You know, so he has the head coaching experience. Right. It's going to be neat to see where he takes his team from dead last and see yeah. what kind of um, movement you can make up inside inside the standings. Yeah, yeah, and also, you know, hey, I mean, this is an obscure stat, but he also knows that it's like to be an AHL team where the NHL team comes back and you have to move your franchise. Exactly, right. So, hey, maybe the Whalers come back and then, you know, he's got to figure out how to play in Albany uh, in the next couple of years. Wouldn't well, that be awesome? He, you know, played, hey? he played 11 <laughs> seasons, uh, yep. AHL, ECHL, and International Hockey League. Yep. Uh, seven seasons with the AHL. He registered nine goals, 21 assists for 30 points. Yeah. Uh, 1,057 penalty minutes. So he yeah. must, have been, must have been a scrapper. Hey, I'm captain of the ECHL team of the Alaskan Aces, and he did win the Kelly Cup in the ECHL. So mm. he's got experience, a little yep. bit of a, you know, being a captain. It's it's almost a little bit similar to Jander because Jander was a cap of the Wolfpack, you know, mm -hmm. won the Calder Cup with the team, you yep. know, way back yep. when, and it never was like a big score. But, uh, you know, in talking to Jander, you and I have done that after games. Uh, let me tell you, if I was a player, I, <laughs> anything Jander <laughs> said, you'd do. It's just the way yeah. he has, he says it, it's almost like, uh, almost like a military kind yeah, of, yeah. Uh, you know, like, yeah. you know, you don't want to upset that guy. That's and right. uh, he was all class. Uh, you know, I can tell you one quick story where we were uh, you know, behind after a game, and it was a bad game, and uh, you know, guys were getting rough and swearing and causing all these trouble. And here we go. Janander goes, says, "Excuse me for a minute." He goes in the back, says some words to the guy very quietly, and then it was quiet. Yep. Everybody listens yep. to what he says. So uh, we're gonna miss Ken Janander. It was, it was uh, uh, one of the guys we really liked. A good, yeah. a good coach, and we wish him well. Just a really good person. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we also have uh, Brendan. Kotiak yeah. uh, was signed to, uh, he's a def defenseman, yeah. uh, six foot six, 240 pounds nice. on defense. Um, out of the uh, he played uh, after three seasons with the University of uh, Minnesota Duluth. Good to get some and size. We yep. have to move fast. We only have a couple minutes yeah. here. Um, Cole Snyder. Yeah. Cole Snyder, forward, uh, coming over uh, from the Bus Buffalo Sabres organization, yeah. uh, 2016 17 with them. 2016 yeah. 17. Uh, 71 games played, 24 goals, 39 assists, 63 points. Nice. And then another guy, Paul Carey, coming yep. over, for another forward yeah. uh, from the Capitals organization. 16-17 uh, was with the Hershey Bears. 55 games played, 24 goals, 31 assists, 55 a points. A point a game. Yeah. So it's nice for yeah. these uh, Wolfpack, because last year's team was horrible, but it's nice for them to get some size and some experience.